NSW. Judges of Reddit, what are some of the weirdest cases you've seen? Studied forensics, and a defense lawyer told me this story. He is called to defend a client who accused of robbing a garage in a nearby city. Police found his fingerprints in a coke machine. Yes, in a coke machine. As in the disassembled and vending machine and dusted it, and found a print on an internal component. Oh, here's the catch. The suspect was currently serving a prison sentence at the time of the crime. So this was the prosecutor's theory. Suspect had broken out of jail. Drove two hours to that garage. Burglarized it. Opened up the coke machine. Left his fingerprint inside it and nowhere else. Reassembled it. Drove back two hours. And snuck back in jail. Surprisingly this case didn't get tossed out laughing and actually went to court. The good news for the suspect is that his lawyer discovered that before his incarceration he happened to work for the business that maintained the coke machine. So he was trying to explain the fingerprint by saying it could have been left there when the suspect performed maintenance. He hired a fingerprint expert, who was able to demonstrate that police used the wrong method for lifting a print. Not a judge, but a reporter who covers courts. The weirdest case I covered was a man getting caught giving a handy to a pit bull. It wasn't sexual. He wanted the dog to impregnate his dog, but the male pit bull's owner refused, so the man broke in and got caught collecting semen. The guy was charged with bestiality. His lawyer argued that charge had to have an element of sexual pleasure for the defendant. He said his client should have been charged with theft of biological material. Not sure why this would be considered any different than the vets who do this frequently to collect samples from racing stallions. Other than the theft aspect of course. Not a judge, but in the US Navy I was a legal officer on a ship. My captain has the ability to administer punishment for violating military law. We had a sailor who broke the law and after the captain found him guilty, the sailor said he would jump overboard. But no one took him seriously and sure enough. He went out to the weather deck and jumped right in the ocean. We had to recover him with one of our small boats and he threatened to do it again. And did do it again a week later. Not a judge, but I was going to court as a witness for my neighbor who was seeking a protection order. While we were there we heard several other cases being heard. In one case, a man was accused of beating his 14 year old daughter and dragging her out of the car while he hit her on the ground. Mother of the child presents her case and the judge turns to the father and gives him the opportunity to present his case, and asks what happened on that day in the car. Well you see the day before. No, I want to hear what happened that day in the car. My daughter has been getting bees in school so. No, what happened in the car? She has been texting boys, so. No, she hit me first. He never really gave a straight answer, but the judge ruled against him. At the next case, there was a similar dynamic of separated parents arguing over a child, and there wasn't a lot of evidence of a physical danger so the judge said a protection order wasn't necessary and recommended they deal with it in family court. Guy from the first case was still around filling out paperwork and started cheering, and the bailiff told him to knock it off. Guy 1 says that he's from California and cheering is normal in court, and that this court is just racist. This guy was black, the judge was black, the bailiff was black, and pretty much most people on both sides of each case were black. I was in court once, next up, behind a guy on trial for a slew of charges around child abuse and rape. The dude told the judge if she's not of age to consent how can her testimony be valid. Judge proceeded to unload on this man and give him a chance to speak before she handed down a sentence. Dude said word for word how are you going to treat her like an adult and me a criminal when I'm the one facing charges. She proceeded to frick him up and he got like 20 life and I was next. Crap myself before I even stood up. Obligatory not a judge, but, had my first argument before the second circuit. So obviously fairly nervous, the case before me had a very generic name, Think Smith vs. Generic Insurance Corporation figured it was going to be dull. But instead, it turned out that the issue was that Mrs. Smith, a widow, had her husband's life insurance payment denied. Why? Husband was an engineer of some sort and had constructed a device to pleasure himself. He plugged said device into a wall socket on to enjoy on Easter Sunday while his family was out, but unfortunately was electrocuted and died, and presumably was found by his poor family on Easter, pantsless and plugged into the wall. 
the insurer tried to deny benefits based on an exclusion for intentional self-harm. Cue a solid 20 minutes of the insurer's lawyer being grilled by very staid and conservative judges as to whether the poor guy actually intended to harm himself. Or, as one judge put it very mildly, it seems the deceased intended. Well, the opposite, and the insurer lawyer struggling to articulate why self-harm and sexual pleasure are not always mutually exclusive. From the questions, it seemed like the widow was likely to win. But man was that awkward for everyone involved. Comma and presumably was found by his family on Easter, pantsless and plugged into the wall. Our brand new sentence. And my best laugh of the day. I'm not a judge, but a legal case involving alleged identical twins once landed on my desk. It somehow hinged on whether or not they were identical or just fraternal twins. They had an identical set of CODIS results. One party claimed that proved they were twins. The other party argued that all it demonstrated was that they were not excluded from being identical twins. So they might not actually be identical. Apparently that was worth paying me reasonable amounts of money to demonstrate, mathematically, that if two siblings share 15 CODIS markers, they are identical twins with a certainty of 99.99% rather than just being fraternal. Or just siblings. Full stop. I have no idea what that case was about or why that was such a controversial piece of evidence. Also not to judge, but I work with a psychologist who does some work in mental hospitals and has to testify as to whether they should or should not be released. Court is over the phone right now because of COVID. So I was privy to the little exchange. My boss's patient is schizophrenic and was refusing his medication. My boss was testifying as to why he shouldn't be released. Violent to his family. Active psychosis. Much to the patient's displeasure. The patient starts yelling. Man. I wanna get out of here. It's so nasty. They got snakes in here. The judge replied. Sir. The quickest way to get released is to comply with your medication. And the medication will also help you with your snake problem. Worked in law for a long while. Escorted an inmate to court for his dismemberment and murder charges trial. He chose to represent himself. Context. Was infatuated with Charles Manson and cults. Started one that preyed on mentally unstable handicapped women and killed them if they tried to leave. This poor girl with autism wanted to go home. He killed her with his followers help, chopped her up, and burned the pieces in a dumpster. His opening statement was something along the lines of ladies and gentlemen of the court I just want to clarify that things being inserted into my butt are going to come up in this trial. I'm not gay, I just liked it. The judge said what the frick, but caught himself before dropping the f-bomb. Everyone in the courtroom laughed at him, it was thrown out and he went for mental health screenings. I don't miss la work, at all. I did accrue a crap load of stories though. The old no homo defense. A simple but effective spell. I was a mediator in small claims court in Queens NY during law school. Mediators attempt to help the parties reach a settlement. A woman brought a claim against a shoe store. According to her, there was a display with shoes for $20. When she got to the register with two pairs of shoes, they charged her $25 per pair. She complained and told the counter person that they were on sale for $20. She brought the counter person to the display and, according to the woman, they had switched the sign so that it now said $25. She paid the $50 and then sued for the $10 extra that she had to pay. The cost for filing the claim was $15. After she told me her story I met with the two lower level employees that the shoe store had sent to the court. They of course denied changing the sign, but I told them they can settle for $10 and leave immediately or they would have to wait for a judge to decide the case. They happily paid the $10. The woman lost $5 in the transaction. It's the principal dang it lol. Obviously not a judge but I sat in on court proceedings once. An off-duty police officer was arrested for driving drunk in the city she worked in. The arguments made by her defense were incredible. First one was that no RN had taken the officer's blood, which a hospital representative clarified this is normal. Reiterated that for something this simple they can have residents trainees do this as part of their learning. Second one was that the bag content was higher because the alcohol was fermenting in the bag. That the exposure to air increased this process, thus raising the tested level. Which was promptly shut down by an expert testifying that is not how it works. 
that alcohol doesn't continue to ferment and produce higher numbers from a blood sample over time. Finally his last ditch effort. He tried saying the blood was tampered with and or not tested correctly. There was a chain of custody provided and everything else that was needed to debunk this. The officer looked very defeated by the end of our sit-in. The judge basically had to tell the defense to put something better together. Finally even the judge got tired of this see what sticks approach and shut it down. Flat out put the defense in his place for creating this fluster cuck. My blood ferments into alcohol is a pretty funny idea. Would save money on booze. Also, fermenting wine needs to be protected from oxygen or it turns into vinegar. Not a judge, but my mom had to go to court once because our dog caught and ate a rabbit. We were charged with endangering wildlife. When the case was called judge laughed and threw the charges out. Obligatory not a judge, but my step grandfather was an Oregon Supreme Court justice. He'd retired long before I met him so I never saw any of his cases in person. But he told me one particular story about a man who tried to represent himself in court. This young man, probably in his early 30s, comes into the courtroom wearing a military service uniform. The guy seems well groomed, coherent, capable. My grandfather served in the air force and while he thought it odd someone would appear in court in uniform, he respected the dude. Military guy starts his defense but only gets a couple sentences in before he holds up his arm and points to the service stripes saying, and these, these are where I get my power from, all my energy comes from these stripes. Everyone starts looking around the room at each other as if silently asking, uh, did you all hear that correctly my grandpa asks him to clarify what he means and he says the stripes are powerful and give him their energy so he can be powerful too. Grandpa stops the court proceedings and orders the guy to have a mental evaluation ASAP. He's immediately escorted out. The next day my grandpa gets a knock at his office door. He opens it and lo and behold it's the same military dude from the previous day, wearing the same outfit. The dude's just standing there and grinning a really big, unsettling smile. Apparently the psychiatrist determined he was of sound mind and wasn't a threat to himself or others so let him go. My grandpa never told me when this story took place but I'm assuming it happened before 72 hour holds were a thing. My grandfather just stood there dumbfounded before asking. Uh, anything I can do for you the guy wanted to talk about his case and getting the trial rescheduled, acting like nothing happened. Grandpa eventually convinced him to go talk to the receptionist instead. I don't know if there was a follow up trial or what happened to the man or even if he was really in the military. Just a bizarre story about a guy who the mental health care system failed. Not a judge, brother-in-law was clerk of the court for most of a decade. Dude comes in with an indecent exposure charge. He was walking around the local target in super shorty shorts, and his lil shorty was longer than the shorts. Okay, this is supposedly fairly straightforward slap on the wrist and get told to buy longer shorts. Except it turns out this isn't this guy's first rodeo. In fact, it's his 25th rodeo. Dude is an exhibitionist, and this was his MO. He was already banned from all retail establishments in half the counties in the state, and a handful of counties in the neighboring states. At this point he'd had so many convictions that he was looking at 25 to life for frickin' indecent exposure. Oddly enough, there was another indecent exposure case involving the other local target a week later. Dude was standing up in the open bed of his pickup at 2am, cranking it in the target parking lot. To be fair I can see how a shopping trip at Target could get you that excited. I found a really nice bed set on clearance once and it did something to me. I waited till I got home though. Plaintiff filed suit in small claims court because the defendant did not perform the sexual acts that plaintiff paid the defendant for. It ended up settling in mediation which was good for the plaintiff because it would have had to be reported for potential criminal charges if it made to court. Not a judge. But I was on jury duty, had to sit on a hearing, the man was begging for his three pitbulls back from his mistress, and finally, after a bunch of asking, she hands him the dogs in an urn. He committed suicide two days later, and then I was on her divorce hearing, about a month later, where her husband was trying to divorce her on the grounds of cheating. She had the gall to say that she never had a side boy, when I was on her hearing two weeks ago. I went to court for a traffic ticket in the state of Mississippi. I was working a project out there. What I found weird is the judge's ruling on two different cases. First was a woman who wrecked her car, 
had a child not in a baby car seat, DUI, and possession of a controlled substance. He gave her a year probation, no jail time. Next was a lady whose son had been skipping school and missed X amount of days, something like 34 days. He put the mother in cuffs right then and there and ordered her to spend the same amount of days in jail that she had allowed her son to miss school. I didn't say anything but I'm pretty sure the look on my face was WTF. In rehab I saw a wealthy woman in her 50s that was on her 50 WI and had not gone to prison yet. Just had very good, expensive lawyers. Most of the people that end up in jail for DWI are poor people with public defenders. Or 3 4 or more dwis in a short period. I went on a field trip to the courthouse and two cases were scheduled that day. The first one was assault and the guy said he didn't whip the ball at his head he only threw it. Second person walked in wearing the things she said she didn't steal. Second person walked in wearing the things she said she didn't steal. That reminds of a case around my parts where a guy had been arrested for using a stolen credit card and his girlfriend shows up to bail him out and tries to pay with a stolen credit card. I'm a lawyer considering whether to someday be a judge. The dildo bomber was the oddest case I've worked on so far. Boyfriend gets dumped in spring. Stalks ex-girlfriend for 9 months. He's known to have an obsessive interest in bombs and explosives, and is a significant me head. In December, he delivers a package to ex-girlfriend. There's no return address, but it says Merry Christmas B, so it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out who sent it. Ex calls the cops who call the bomb squad, who open the package. Inside is a large vibrator that's been hollowed out and filled with explosives. He apparently assumed that she would eagerly use it and blow herself up. This is how you know that men and women think differently. I think that has little to do with men and women but human and me head. My dad is a judge and had a case that revolved around bull sperm. Basically someone leased a bull and wasn't supposed to breed it and they bred it anyway and the owner sued for the price of the sperm. I'm not a judge but have to go to court a lot for work. I deal with a lot of weird stuff in life and sometimes I feel like I'm in a dream. That or a simulation as people like to say because there is no way life is so weird. Anyway, this little guy gets up and introduces himself to the judge, while his lawyer is standing by him, and says, Hi your honor, my name is Precious Love, and this is my lawyer. Counselor Frankenstein and I just stared at them thinking I had gone crazy. Not gonna lie, I would be checking for some proof of reality as well, or that I wasn't having some kind of stroke. Not a judge but worked in a courthouse for a summer doing probate work. The weirdest case I saw was one where a 60 some odd years old woman believed herself to be the reincarnation of the Archangel Gabriel. She tried to murder her neighbors by trying to get in through their back door dodgy door while naked and armed with a butter knife. She sounds fun. I'm just a law student, but I'll relay a case I read and still think about to this day. A woman's family was suing a guy for intentional infliction of emotional distress. What happened is this guy was doing some sort of work at the scene of a car accident where a girl from the aforementioned family had been beheaded. He took a picture of the girl and sent it to his friend, who posted it online. Her family ended up seeing it, and sued him. The family ended up losing. This isn't nearly as nully as other comments here. Also not a lawyer. I supported a friend, 19F, who had to go in and make a police report on our once trusted, long standing, but now ex, friend, 22F. In short, while both girls were out, somehow my friend's pet ferret escaped her enclosure and attacked my ex friend's guinea pigs who had to be put down. Now this is all very sad. My friend was feeling awful and ready to apologize and pamper my ex-friend as much as she needed. Instead, the moment ex-friend got home, she punched her straight into the brick patio and proceeded to beat the crap out of her. My friend was shocked and terrified. Ran to her room but she kept going. Bleeding and bruised, my friend managed to lock ex-friend out, but then she picked up a sledgehammer, then a drill threatening to kill her. With the help of mates she escaped with a smashed phone, but now homeless. Ex-friend is an influencer with about a 200k following of tweens. Got her mother and her army of fans to brigade against my friend and any of us who obviously sided with her for almost a year. 
never apologized or owned up to anything all the way to court. As a first time offender she was only put on probation. Nonetheless the police officer got a kick out of the absurdity of the story as the most bizarre thing he'd heard that day. Another bizarre thing was when filing the report. We realized that despite knowing her for 3 years we didn't even know her last name. Apparently that didn't matter. The police officer got her name up near instantly as she was already on record for attempting to file a restraining order against a girl she didn't like for no reason. Ex-friend also doxxed this girl's address online and she was getting death threats and living in fear for months. We only found out all this later. A true nutcase. I do wish I could've attended the hearing though. Okay I'm not a judge but years ago I used to process court transcripts. I often would read them because some were really crazy, especially older ones because times were just different back then. Anyways there was one dated around 1940, it was a man divorcing his wife. After the divorce was final he sued her for mental distress and anguish because apparently her vagina stunk really bad. And because of it he didn't want to have sex with her and it caused him to feel like less of a man because he wasn't having sex as much as he though he should. He won the case, got custody of their child and she was ordered to pay a decent amount of money to him. Also the judge urged her to go to the doctor and get help for her smelly vagina because until she did, she would likely never find another man or be happy in life. LOL can you imagine that happening today? Thank god things are changing. That poor lady. Not a judge, but I am an attorney now and should be obvious by my name. Back when I was doing my whole internship shtick, I worked at a mental health courthouse. When I finished my usual routine I'd be allowed to sit at hearings with the clerk of the court and I sat in one a particularly odd case where the accused went through an elaborate setup with his ex-GF and her family for a Thanksgiving dinner. Long story short, dude was off his meds he convinced his ex-GF and family over for Thanksgiving dinner after he had gone off on a tangent on them which caused the breakup. After Thanksgiving the dude texts the ex and her family pictures of his penis in all of the food they had eaten the day before. I was like, colon well he certainly stuffed that turkey. Until the very end, I was expecting that he claimed to never have seen a potato before. Not a judge but have spent an extensive amount of time in court and incarcerated. I was due to be sentenced on my second breaking and entering charge. I was addicted to m and I am now over 3 years sober. A man from the public was getting sentenced before me. He was charged with repeatedly sodomizing his grandson when he would watch him. His grandson, who was in elementary school, in turn went and sodomized a younger kid in the bathroom at recess. Before he was sentenced, the judge asked the probation for their sentencing guidelines, which they responded with no jail time. 5 years probation. I was in disbelief that this was even a consideration. He ended up being sentenced to 5 years in prison for sodomizing his grandson on multiple occasions. I was then sentenced after. Probation recommended for my second charge ever, stemming from my drug addiction. 4 years with 3 years parole, which I got. It was such a weird contrast in cases, and can't believe a person could even weigh our cases in such a way. The good old justice system. Fricked beyond repair. Glad you're sober and doing better mate I dealt with the same addictions and they get their hooks in deep. Not a judge but grand jury, which is where mainly the police testify for indictment on people they've arrested, no judge just the in one officer was in the police station parking lot when a vehicle screeched into the parking lot next to him and a guy jumped out freaking out about how he had taken all these drugs and was now dying. Left vehicle door open, lots of drugs in plain sight, and the guy was fine he just panicked for a minute. Easiest arrest that officer ever had, also easiest indictment. LOL that's funny, back when I was working mall security, prior to weed legalization, we had a guy at the mall call the police because he was super stoned and didn't want to drive stoned, why he chose to call the police, I'll never know, the cop showed up, took the guy's keys, locked guy's door, and tossed the keys on the seat and shut the door and left, problem solved. Not a judge. But at this exact moment there is a hashtag trending in Brazil in support of a woman who was raped after getting drugged in a nightclub. The guy who did it is now being charged with non-willful rape, because apparently he had no intention of raping the victim. His lawyer then proceeded to humiliate the woman during the trial by showing pictures of her that he deemed vulgar, while she begged for respect. Honestly I just feel like throwing up right now. That's horrible. 
I hope she comes out on top of all of this. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.